Welcome to Periospot video podcast and today we are going to talk about some complications on implant dentistry. Let's go! So first of all, today we are going to talk about some one of the complications that we have on implant dentistry that is mainly about what happens when we have a buccal soft tissue de decencies. So here we are going to, to talk about some aesthetic failures. First of all, this is based on an article published by Sans Martin in 2019. So we are going through this article which is quite interesting and I really recommend you to take a look at it. So, we all know what are the events that happens after an extraction and we all know what happens that after removing a teeth we, we are going to have a collapse from the bone because all this bundle of bone that is surrounding the, the, the teeth and depends on the blood supply from the, from the teeth is going to disappear so we are going to have a collapse of the bone walls. So this, this you can find on the literature, you have the, the articles from Schropp in 2003 by, by Kadaropoli in 2003 and also from Arrow von Linde in 2003. But there is one important thing to know. When, it, when we have a recession, it means that is in a teeth. When we have a descensus, it, it means that is in an implant. So this is the difference that we have to make between soft tissue descensus and a recession in a teeth and an implant. So, when, when we have a soft tissue day sense around an implant, there is a consequence that is the, the first consequence is an aesthetic failure of the case. But of course, this, this with time is going to come with other biological complications like for example perimplantitis or other complications that can bring uh, some problems to the patient. And we have to somehow solve these situations. So, what are the factors that have an impact on a vocal soft tissue stability? So first of all, we have the implant position and the angle, and also the interproximal bone crest. It's, it's also something that we should take care because uh, should consider because we know that from articles from Ancan in 2003 that this is a very important factor to preserve the soft tissue, and also the depth of the implant platform. How deep we are placing the implant, and if we, if you want something more information about this, you you have an article and on peri on Periospot that is the name is how deep is your implant, and you will find it in very interesting if you want to know more about this. Another important factor is the soft tissue thickness. So we will see that through in this article there is an importance of this uh, of having a thickness for the soft tissue, and also the facial bone crest. So what was measured in this article from Sans Martin in 2019? What, what in order to assess the book of soft tissue they sensors around implants, what, what were the, the considerations that they took to, to really uh, know and understand why there is this, uh, why these, these sensors appear in the implants? So the first one will be uh, they put an horizontal line that was joining the buccal and the palatal aspects of the implant shoulder so they have this first reference. The second reference is the distance between the previous horizontal line and also the bone implant contact, the first bone implant contact that we have in the buccal, in the buccal phase between the implant and the bone. And of course the angulation of the implant. What is the angulation of the implant? Because with this information we will know we know what is the position of the implant if it is positioned toward buccally or palatal. Of course, the millimeters that you have outside this alveolar envelope that is calculated by the distance from the intersection of the point number one and the point number four and the most buccal aspect of the implant platform abutment. So, with this information, you will know that how li the likelihood that you will have a descent on an implant, the, uh, considering the amount of the implant that is outside of the envelope. So the conclusions from this article is that there is a, a, a strong relationship between the implant position and the presence of a, a soft tissue descensors 
in an implant. So this is quite logical to think about this when we have an implant that is not ideally positioned in a 3D position, it's very likely and we, if we have it placed to it vocally, we, we can understand perfectly that from a clinical point of view, we are going to have a recession or a distance of the soft tissue around the implant. The other thing that I think this number is really st is something that we should consider and it's very important that we will have 34 more times or likelihood of having a presence of a buccal soft tissue they sensed on implants if this implant is placed outside the implant. So that's why it's very important the position of the implant also from the, a picocoronal position. So as um, um, the, the deep we place the implant, of course we cannot place the implant very deep, some, some systems we, we, we should not do that. But we should, we should understand that if we place the implant outside this envelope, we will, the likelihood of having a, a, a day census is going, to, is going to increase 34 times. So also in the bone defects, uh, less than 5 millimeters uh, do, do not have an impact on the digital uh, margin. And this is, this is an article from June in 2017. And this is something, this is really uh, remarkable, this article, because uh, we, we, we should and we learned that we should uh, do and perform a guided bone regeneration in these situations when we have uh, um, a sort of uh, some lack of bone tissue in the buccal zone. Of course, I think that this article and this, uh, this, is, this is my take on this is that we have interproximal bone that is going to support the, all this all, all these soft tissue. If we do not have the interproximal bone like, like it was uh, proposed by Can in 2003, so we will have a recession. If the implants are properly placed in the position in the socket, so if we place the implant in an ideal 3D position, so the bone wall, the buccal bone wall, will have a limited impact. So this thing that we have, we, we give a lot of importance to the bundle bone and to the buccal bone, and it seems that this has a limited impact on the presence of day sensors on implants. So it's more about the position of the implant, the technique or what we are using and what we are doing. And also there is a combination of the, uh, an optimal position of the implant in a 3D position and, uh, and the buccal bone day sensors uh, because in, when we have this both, both when we have a buccal bone uh, day sensor and we have a non-ideal position of the implant, there will be more likelihood of having this kind of day senses on an aesthetic problem. And also the buccal soft tissue recession may be less likely to happen on cemented retained grounds, which these things is something that we, uh, we for, at least for my opinion, is something that I was not really aware because I prefer the screw retained restorations almost always. So uh, in this case, it will be, um, so it, it, it's good to understand that some abutments are going to somehow uh, occupy the space that we should have bookily. And this the theory that came from Sue in 2010, Sue, the article from Sue in 2010, uh, so the, uh, the more space we have, uh, the better for the soft tissue, and also we we understand we can understand that from from articles from Gustavo Cabello in 2015 also. So some last recommendations, and this is a short video podcast. So when we place an immediate implant, for example, we should leave at least a gap of, for example, 1.5 2.2 millimeters. So we will we will be sure that the implant is not positioned toward buccally to a buccal position. And also using a narrow implant is something that we should consider and today we have some implants that have a, 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 an alloy of zirconia and titanium to avoid a guided bone regeneration or, or to avoid more invasive procedures to the patient. So if we use these narrow implants in the aesthetic zone so we will have more bone around the implant and we will really have more stability around the soft, uh, the more uh, soft tissue stability around the implants. 
And this is all from, from my side and today. And today we, we just wanted to give you a take about, to give you some an overview about this article from Sans Martin. I think you should follow him on Instagram and also on Twitter. He has and he published really interesting stuff. Uh, also with Eric, that uh, is, uh, is also one of the co-authors of this article. And also a message for, for all, the, the, all, the, all, all the people that are seeing this video podcast, you also should, should go to, the, um, to, the, um, to follow some, some of the groups on Facebook that are, that are quite, quite interesting. Like for example, for the Hispanic, for the Hispanic uh, um, community, we have these Stranger Implants, um, <laughs> Stranger Implants uh, Facebook group where, where we have um, where we share, you know, these cases that are, uh, I don't know, uh, weird cases or you, you cannot understand how, how, how these implants were placed or really weird cases and complex cases with implants, you know, places uh, around, uh, around the, I don't know, around the sinus, inside the sinus or you, you will see the cases and you can share also cases, uh, these uh, terrific cases on this group. And also we have a, a group that was created by Melvin and uh, it's a group about tips in implant dentistry that you also should follow on Facebook that I strongly recommend you. And if you like this, this video podcast and if you like would like to see more of this video po podcast, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So see you in the next video podcast. <laughs>